The ESP32, the successor of the ubiquitous ESP8266, is now available. And it's almost incredible what this chip can do. Almost, because it seems like it's not quite done yet. But let me start the story a few days earlier. I've been commissioned to design a smartphone-connected LED controller for a battery-powered application. The LEDs will be turned off almost always, and in that time the Bluetooth hardware shouldn't drain the battery. That sounded like an ideal opportunity to try the relatively new Bluetooth Low Energy, which allows these fitness trackers to last over a year on a non-rechargeable battery. The other requirements started off all innocently and simple. 12 volt in, 21 RGB LEDs out, and an API for the software developers of the project. But these things have a tendency to grow when you're not looking. And so, when we were discussing mounting of the 21 individual LEDs, I mentioned that there are also programmable RGB LED strips that can be sticky taped into aluminium profiles. And as a result of that, suddenly I found myself sitting on the floor, feeding almost 10 amps into 450 WS2812s, having to take care of power management, signal integrity and microcontroller resources. But no worries, the effort is well worth it. A lot of LEDs are a lot of fun. But let's get back to the ESP32 for now. It was kind of a leap of faith because I've never used one before. But I chose it anyway because of its fantastic hardware specifications, which were mandatory for this project. For every LED, three bytes have to be allocated in the microcontroller RAM. To keep track of the RGB values in a system with 450 LEDs, and to transmit them all over one data line fast enough to get smooth animations is not trivial at all. But the ESP32 performs admirably. Being released by the end of 2016, of course it comes with great hardware specifications. But I can't complain about the software development platform either. Espressive continues to do what has made them so popular in the first place. High quality community support and a ton of free open software for their products. One example being the RMT library. Originally it was intended for infrared remote control stuff. But it makes everything that has to shift out a lot of data over one GPIO pin blissfully easy. If you want to control a large number of WS2812 LEDs for example, you can just give it a block of RAM which it sends out asynchronously, while the buffer is refilled somewhere else. If you have to solve a common problem like setting up a Bluetooth low energy GET server, you can just download a working example from their GitHub repository and concentrate on whatever it is you need extra. To mine I added a couple of functions that turn formatted input strings into LED numbers and colors. These shortcuts allowed me to finish the entire project within a couple of days after receiving the parts. A couple of days still is a pretty long time, isn't it? Well, yes. And that's because the software and the documentation wasn't fully done at the time. The Bluetooth software didn't have any security, for example. Basically everybody with a modern smartphone could have connected and controlled my LEDs. To avoid that, I didn't start writing a hugely complicated two-way handshake encryption kind of thing. I just added a big push button that has to be pressed while connecting. Otherwise, attempted connections are rejected. Using Bluetooth Low Energy in this project works because you can configure the ESP as a GET server that advertises certain characteristics, which in turn can send and receive data. But it isn't ideal, I don't think. Because of limited range and the possibility of compatibility issues with older hardware. I also had some problems with flow control, where the Android app sent data faster than the ESP could process it. And lastly, it isn't really meant for this kind of thing. A list of predefined GET characteristics include age, name, body fat, rainfall, but definitely not LED number and color. Doesn't matter though, the smartphone app doesn't care if it has to upload data to a hip circumference characteristic. For what they offer, these ESP Room32 modules are very affordable. They just need a 3.3V power supply, a reset button and an LED, and a USB to a UART bridge for programming at least once. Because programming over the air is possible. I wouldn't bother trying to DIY such a minimal circuit, because these breakout boards are not expensive either. 
What I'd like to see though is a temporary socket for initial programming of a larger quantity of these modules. Might be easy if I can find a thinner version of these test point probes. And that's about all I wanted to say in this video. Sorry I can't show the final product, that's top secret. I just spent a lot of time with this chip and my brain somehow concluded that that was reason enough for me to make a video about it. I hope it wasn't too boring. Either way, thanks for watching. See you next time.